to Tom Cavalcade of America, starring Shirley Booth and Eddie Albert. This is Eddie Albert. And this is Shirley Booth. Uh, and this is the Freedom Train. Now, these three play the main parts on our cavalcade tonight, a fantasy called The Man Who Took the Freedom Train. But before we begin, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Good evening. Here's something to your advantage to know before you buy rainwear or sportswear for yourself or for the children. There are two kinds of water repellents, the renewable type and the durable type. Renewable water repellents usually come out when garments are washed or cleaned, and so must be replaced if the garment is to repel water. A durable water repellent, like DuPont Zeland, continues to give weather protection through many washings or cleanings. So keep your weather eye open for the Z-Land tag on rainwear and on sportswear. Z-Land, spelled Z-E-L-A-N, is a durable water repellent and is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> original radio play, The Man Who Took the Freedom Train, starring Eddie Albert and Shirley Booth on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Brooklyn Specialty Company, I'll connect you. Brooklyn Specialty Company, no, I'm sorry, she's out of town. You're welcome. Hey, here's the pencils you wanted, Shirley. Oh, thanks, Pete. Where's Eddie? Where else? At the water cooler, taking his bicarbonate. Again? Take my board a minute, will you, Pete? Oh, I got stuff to do. You can read Captain Midnight just as well at the switchboard as any place. Uh, Brooklyn Specialty Company. No, this ain't the switchboard girl. trying to be, Eddie. A man of distinction the morning after? Ha, 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 ha. Well, if you feel so bad, why don't you see a doctor? I did yesterday. Oh, what did he say? Says I should get more sleep. Just what I've been telling you. How can I sleep when I'm so nervous? Well, did the doctor say what made you nervous? Yeah. It's because I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> you got what they call a vicious circle. <laughs> well, it ain't funny. He gave me some pills, but... I know they won't help. Well, Eddie, if you just stop worrying so about everything... How can I help it? Don't you read the papers? Strikes all over the country, cost of living's going up, a depression's coming. Some folks say there'll be another war any minute. And a, a, a lion escaped from the zoo. Well, did he bite anybody? No, but when they were catching him, a policeman shot another policeman. <laughs> oh, Eddie, you know what I think's wrong with you? What? You're just not happy in your job here, that's uh, all. I'm lucky to have any job. Employment's getting worse and worse. Oh, but you'll never be happy as a bookkeeper, Eddie. Why don't, why don't you start that restaurant business like you and, and your brother planned? Well, this is no time to go into any business. Well, you and John used to think so. Uh, during the war, it was different. It seemed like as soon as it was over, things were going to be great. And look at them. Oh, but Eddie, that restaurant John found in California would be a gold mine. I know it would. I could tell from the pictures he sent. And with what we got saved up, we could swing it. Wouldn't you love that, Eddie? That's no, silly even to think about. We'd go broke in no time. John didn't think so. Uh, if John was here, maybe I'd feel different. But he isn't, so I'm just going to hang on to this little old job right here. It's not much, but the pay is there every week. Eddie, yeah. let's get married. Now, right away. And live on what? Well, we can make enough between us, and, and then there's some saved up. Suppose I get sick. What is a baby? Well, we just get along as best we can. Other people do. Well, I'm not going to let us take the chance. Not in these times. Oh, but, Eddie, if we wait until we save enough on what we're making now, it's going to be ages before we get married. Look, it's not my fault. Times are so uncertain. Oh, you make me sick, Eddie Bullock. You'd think you were the only person in the world who had any worries. 
Well, if you think I'm going to sit around and wait for peace on earth and no more war and no more depression and inflation and deflation and whatnot, just so you can sleep nights, you're mistaken. Oh, Shirley, I... Well, I don't want to marry anybody with that much look, patience. listen to me a second, will you, Shirley? I'm I... sorry. i got to get back to my boy. Hey, look, should we have lunch together? I, I... Sorry, I've got plans, Eddie. <laughs> Especially company. Just a minute. Hey, where's Shirley, Pete? Uh, oh, it's her lunchtime. I know that, but did she say where she was going to eat? Well, she ain't. She and some of the girls went down to the station to see the Freedom Train. Mr. Walsh gave them a little extra time. The Freedom Train, huh? Yeah, it's that red, white, and blue job with all the history stuff on board. What do you know? Have you seen it? Well, certainly. Patriotic, huh? Well, not only that. It's free. <laughs> Excuse uh, me, no please. No crowding, please. Keep your places in the line. Say, have you seen a blonde girl in a blue dress, kind of pretty girl? <laughs> They're all pretty, mister. Now, she was with some other... Oh, there she is, up in the front of the line. Thanks very much. Excuse me, will you? Pardon me, can I get through here? Hey, who are you moving in ahead of? Well, oh, oh, sorry, Sonny, but I have to see this young lady. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Eddie. Did you come to see the Freedom Train? No, I'm just looking for you. Oh, really? Say, I'm sorry about that fight. You you didn't mean what you said, did you? Yes, I did, Eddie. Well, but... forward in the line, please. Look, Shirley, can we talk it over? Step forward, please. Come on, we can go on the train now. Do you want to come with me? Gee, I ain't got the time. I'm, I'm due back at the office. Oh, come on, Eddie. You ought to see it. Well, all right, for a minute or two, maybe. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like a church. Take your hat off, Eddie. I already have. Oh, look, Eddie. Here's a letter from Christopher Columbus. Yeah? In Latin, too. And, and here's Jefferson's dra- rough draft of the Declaration of Independence that says hey, there. come on. We haven't got much time. You know, Eddie, Columbus probably had his troubles, too. Mm. Oh, and here, the Mayflower Compact. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign. What's a compact? Oh, an agreement? Oh. And look at this letter from George Washington. Didn't he write nine? I really shouldn't be away from the office so long. You know, the head bookkeeper is just looking for an excuse to fire me. Oh, you just imagine that, Eddie. No, look, no. look, here's the Star Spangled Banner. Imagine him writing all those verses. Yeah. He's probably the only guy in the world who ever knew them all, too. And here's the Gettysburg Address, Eddie. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Uh-huh. I guess they had bad times then. Hey, look, I don't like to be a pill, Shirley, but don't you think we ought to get going? Well, you're certainly not going without seeing the Iwo Jima flag. The Iwo Jima? Have they got that here? Sure, it's in the next car. Come on. There it is. Is that the flag we saw in the newsreels with the five Marines putting it up? Yeah. Hey, I'll bet John was right in there with them. Yeah. Eddie. What, Shirley? I wish you'd think over the things John told you when you saw him last. You mean about the about the restaurant? About everything, Eddie. Especially about having faith in the future. Yeah, John had faith in the future, didn't he? Look at him now. In a grave in Iwo Jima. But he believed in something, Eddie. He believed in this country, just like all the men on this train. I don't mean us looking. I mean I mean the ones that wrote the papers. Columbus and Washington and Lincoln. Do you think things was easy for them? I don't. I bet Lincoln had as much trouble sleeping as you have. Maybe Washington's stomach bothered him. And for all we know, Columbus was afraid of his boy. Shirley! Shirley! What, Eddie? Oh, I I thought you'd gone. Well, gee, that's funny. What is? Where'd all the people go? Who? The ones on the train. We're the only ones in the car. Well, that is peculiar. Uh, I guess the others have sense enough to get back to their offices on time. Yeah, but where are all the soldiers who were guarding the exhibits? I could put the Magna Carta right here in my pocket for all anybody to see me. Well, maybe they're closing early today. you feel the floor shaking? Oh, it's just your imagination. Eddie, do you hear what I do? Oh, a train going by. Uh-uh. It's this train going. We're moving. We're moving? Yeah. Oh, what are you going to do, Eddie? Well, i got to get the conductor to stop the train. 
What else? Conductor? I can't understand where everyone went. But this is somebody's idea of a practical joke. It's oh, a gold... Wendy, they're not going to move the freedom train around just to play a trick on us. I don't care why they're doing it. If they don't stop soon, I'm going to lose my job. You probably will, too. Oh, Mr. Bullock will understand. Oh, sure, he'll understand. Why are you late, Bullock? Well, the freedom train ran away with me, sir. Oh, yeah, he'll understand. <laughs> it does sound kind of peculiar. Come on, let's find that conductor. But where? He's probably in the car up ahead. Come on. Look out for that door. Kind of an adventure, ain't it, Eddie? Yeah, if we lose our jobs, it'll be an adventure, all right, all right. We won't go any further. Go back. Hey, go back. You that? We're, we're not the only ones who are sore. Go back. Go back. We will go on. No. We will go on, I say. That conductor's lost his mind. That's what the trouble is. He don't look like any conductor I ever saw. Look at that funny old-fashioned uniform he's wearing. And that sword. Oh, some more freedom train stuff, that's all. Go back! Go back! I will go on. Already we've gone on for 80 days or more. Well, now, 80 days is kind of an exaggeration. Go back! It turns us pain. Go, go back! All over the edge of the world. I think they're all nuts, Shirley. They've all got funny costumes on. They all look like pirates or something. Go back! Go back! I say on. Oh, this is getting kind of silly. Come on, I'll ask him what's going on. Hey, you are the sword. Where's the conductor? What conductor? Well, the one in charge of the train, naturally. I do not fathom your remarks, sir. Well, it's nothing to get fancy about. I just want to go back to where I started. You too? Go back! Go back! Go back. Silence, all of you. I will go back when I have found the Indies, not before. Neither your cries, nor the adverse winds of heaven, nor all the creatures of the deep shall keep me from it. For by my lady, I am not Columbus. Columbus? Eddie, look outside. Hey, where'd all that water come from? I can't figure it out, Eddie, but the freedom train's on the ocean. The ocean? Yeah, don't look now, Eddie, but I think we're about to discover America. <laughs> Listening to The Man Who Took the Freedom Train, starring Shirley Booth and Eddie Albert on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Eddie Bullock and his girl Shirley came to see the Freedom Train. They uh, expected it might be interesting, but they didn't expect the train to start off with them. And they certainly didn't expect to discover Columbus on board. Eddie, why are we going into the next car? To find the conductor. If we don't get this train stopped and get back to the office, Mr. Walsh is going to fire us sure. But what about Columbus? Don't talk like that, Shirley. If that was Columbus, we're just out of our minds or something. It was just some freedom train stunt. Well, whoever it was, he was one man standing against a lot of people, and somebody ought to have stuck up for him. Suppose it should be Columbus. Suppose he didn't discover America. How would you like that? Oh, come on. Therefore, brethren, it is my opinion we have angered God, and he frowns on our settlement here at Plymouth. No, brother, no, no, no. Well, look at this crazy car. Like a country church. Looks like a meeting of some kind. Who can deny that through sickness or starvation, the Lord hath already taken more than half our number from our midst? It must be the pilgrims. Hey, stop talking like that, sir. They can't be pilgrims. Well, look at their clothes and listen to them. Good brethren, the bitter hardships of the winter will soon be past. We have come to a strange land to worship God in our own way. And woe be Titus if we falter so soon. In God's service. Oh, yeah. God would not punish thus if he desired we remain here. Uh, brethren, we must return from whence we came. Oh. Brethren, brethren, let us put the matter to the boat then. And whichever course hath most in its favor shall be pursued. Let those who favor going back raise up their hands and declare themselves. Oh. Now, let those who will remain in Plymouth raise up their hands. Oh. The meeting seemeth equally divided. Uh, brother Bullock hath not voted yet. Declare thyself, Brother Bullock. I mean you, Eddie. Come on, let's get out of here. They're all bombing. Raise up your hand and declare yourself, Brother Bullock. Shall the colony remain, or shall it be abandoned? It's none of my business, mister. All I want is a conductor. Do not avoid the issue, Brother Bullock. 
Decide. It's none of my business, I tell you. Decide. Look, fellas, I gotta find a conductor. Come on, Shirley. I don't think that was at all nice of you, Eddie. What? Not telling the pilgrims what they should do. Look, I don't know how you feel, Shirley, but I want to get off this train. There's something awful wrong about it. I want to get off. Gee, it's cold in here. Yeah, too much air conditioning. Well, it feels like it was away below zero, like it was winter or something. Listen to that wind. Yeah, look how dark it is. Maybe we better go back, Eddie. No, we've got to find out who's in charge of this train. Come on, there's nothing to be afraid of. Eddie, there's a man up there. Look, he's on his knees. Yeah, maybe he knows what's going on. Well, I don't think we ought to bother him, Eddie. He's praying. Oh, he's getting up now. Come on. He's got on a costume, too. Look at the sword. Hey, Jack. Jack? Yeah, I meant you, mister. Who, who's in charge around here? I am, lad. Oh, well, it's about time. I want to go home. So do I, lad. In this winter darkness, I almost nightly dream I'm home. All I want when the war is done is to go back there and live out my days, farming and sitting in the sun beside the blue Potomac. If God is good, I will die there. Where is your home, lad? Brooklyn? There's a saying that home is where the heart is. Yeah, so let's make the arrangements to get us back, huh? What's your name, lad? Eddie Bullock. You realize what it would mean for you to stop now? Yeah, it'd mean I'd only be about two hours late and I wouldn't lose my job. It would mean the loss of our cause, lad. None of us like it here at Valley Forge. We all want to go home. If we don't stay, we'll have no homes to call our own. Look, I got to get back to the office, mister. I can't stay. I wish you could, Eddie. We need you, Private Bullock. Valley Forge, huh? I suppose he thinks he's George Washington. Well, Eddie, he's just like the postage stand. But he, he looks so unhappy. Well, I don't know what he's unhappy about. Mr. Walsh isn't going to fire him. Oh, Eddie, if just once you'd stop being afraid. Come on, let's try the next car. <laughs> in my day, but this has got them all beat. You know what I think it is, Eddie? Hmm. It's a big covered wagon. Yeah. Well, howdy, strangers. You joining up with us? Well, you were trying to find out who's in charge of the train. Well, my husband's leader of this wagon train. He ain't here now. He's off hunting. I'm Mrs. Jessup, and these four tykes are part of my brood. They're lovely children. <laughs> well, how many you got? Oh, we're not married. And traveling together? We're engaged. Well, our preacher man can spice you up like that. Well, Eddie and I are waiting until we have enough money in the bank. Well, all Pawn me had was eight dollars and an axe. It did pretty good back in Indiana, too. But a big growing brood needs chances of their own. We think Oregon's the place for it. Ma. Oh, this is my boy Enos, my eldest. Ma. Yes, Enos? What's the trouble with your tongue, son? Speak up. Ma, there's, there's bad news. Tell me, son. Well, Pa and Ezekiel got separated from the rest of us, and some of them Indian devils... Go on, son. Well, we heard the shooting, but it was too late by the time we got there. Pa and Zeke both? Yes, Ma. Pa and Zeke both? They got six of them red devils first, Ma. Oh, that don't help none. Uh, take the young'uns out, will you, Enos? Yes, Ma. We was wondering, would you still keep on for Oregon? Oregon's where us Jessup set out for, and Oregon's where we'll come at. Will you join us, strangers? Why don't we, Eddie? In Oregon, we could have our own place and all. Yeah, but gee, that's so far. Well, the Jessup's ain't afraid. I well, know, but I'd be giving up a regular job. Oh, young people need a chance of their own. And Oregon's the place for it. Yes, sir, Oregon's the place. 
Hey, where'd she go? For any nation so conceived and uh, so, so dedicated and long endure. Mr. We are met here on a great battlefield of that war. We are sent to dead... Hmm. We, uh... We have come. We have come to dedicate. That's better. Look, he's right there. Come, come to dedicate. dedicate. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I wonder if he knows where we're going. Uh, so pardon me, uh, Mr. Lincoln. Oh, uh, yes, son? Uh, where does this train go? To Gettysburg. Well, I don't want to go to Gettysburg. Neither do I, son. There are several thousand new graves there, and a lot of people think I'm responsible for them. The Civil War wasn't your fault, Mr. Lincoln. A lot of bright, important men tell me I should make peace with the South now. Oh, but you're going to win, Mr. Lincoln. I hope you're right, miss. Uh, pardon me, but where does this train go after Gettysburg? Depends on the engineer, son. Well, let's get on with my speech. I hope somebody likes it. Have you looked outside, Eddie? We're passing through the strangest places. Work administration. Remember the name. Theodore Roosevelt. Woodrow Wilson. First World War. Prohibition. 1929. World War II. And what I want to know is, where is Brooklyn, 1948? Well, let's try the next car. Maybe we can find out something later. It's a bunch of Marines. Shirley, that looks like my brother John. It is John. How can it be? He's dead. Eddie! Hey, what are you doing on this train? Hello, Shirley. John. Hey, what have you been doing to my kid brother? Threatening to marry him? You look scared to death. John. John, gee. Gee, it's great to see you. What are you doing here? Oh, this is Uncle Sam's party, Ed. All I know is we're headed for the South Pacific someplace. Don't let him send you to Iwo Jima, John. Where? I Iwo Jima. You know where so many of you Marines... Well, anyway, don't go there. When Mr. Whiskers asks you any place, Eddie, you go. You civilians don't appreciate that. Oh, I wish I was gone instead of you. Oh, you can't be a Marine with an eardrum like yours, kid. You're doing your share in a war plan. I still wish it was me. Ed, you've got to stay here and get things set for that restaurant we're going to have. John and Eddie's. Uh, do, do you really think we can work it? We can work anything we believe in, kid. Don't forget that. Don't ever forget it. Don't ever forget it. He's gone, Shirley. Yes, Eddie, I know. Hey, we got to stop this train. We can't let John go to Iwo Jima. Come on. Where? Well, if I can't find anybody else, I'll find the engineer. <laughs> Shirley. What, Eddie? The cab is empty. There's nobody running the train. Oh, but there must be an engineer or somebody. Well, where is he? But even the freedom train can't run itself. Well, there's nobody here, and the train's certainly running. But well, there's always an engineer. There's his license. Eddie, look at the name on the license. Eddie Bullock. Eddie, you're the engineer. Me? That's what it says, Eddie. After all, somebody has to run it. Well, maybe I can figure out how to stop it. No, don't stop the train, Eddie. Hey, you want me to let John go to Iwo Jima and be killed? John wants to go. He did go. Don't you see how much depends on you? If you stop the train, John will go to Iwo, but neither will the others, and we'll lose the war. Lincoln will never get to Gettysburg, and Jessup won't get to Oregon, and Washington will freeze forever at Valley Forge, and Columbus won't even discover it. Don't you see, Eddie? Freedom is you and me. You're the boss. You can drive the train any place you want to. You know, Shirley... What, Eddie? Maybe we ought to have that restaurant John and I used to talk about. You and me. It'd be perfect, Eddie. <laughs> I'm not just sure where California is, but we'll find it. Come on, train. Come on, train. I'm driving 
on the train. You feel all right, Eddie? You bet I do. I... Hey, where am I? Well, where am I? On the Freedom Train, looking at the Iwo Jima flag. Oh. Oh. I, I, I guess the flag set me dreaming. About John? Yeah, about John. And you and me and, and the restaurant we're going to have. Are we, Eddie? We sure are. We'll call it John's Place. Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Bullock, proprietors. Oh, Eddie, don't you love the freedom train? Surely. It's the only way to travel. of the DuPont Company. The photographs Matthew Brady made of the Civil War, of Abraham Lincoln, are among the priceless treasures of our American heritage today. And in a personal sense, the same thing is true of the photographs you have of your own family, whether they are snapshots or posed portraits. When a friend asks you to hold still for a minute so he can click a shutter at you, or when you pose for your high school annual, all scrubbed and self-conscious, you never think that a bit of history is being recorded. Only with the passing years do you realize that that little picture actually caught a moment of time for you, like a butterfly in a net. A moment of time infinitely precious for the very reason that it's gone forever and will never return again. We cherish the old-fashioned photographs of Grandpa and Grandma standing erect and awkward before a painted scene with iron clamps holding their heads afraid to move because the camera exposure took so long in those days. Today, through product research and advancements in camera technique, a visit to a photographic studio is a pleasant experience. The modern portrait photographer is both technician and artist. He is an expert in capturing your individual personality and expression. There's a photographer near you, and it's a good idea to drop in on him now and then. As a matter of fact, this is a good time of year right now to do it, because Mother's Day is coming on May 9th, and there's nothing in this world your mother would rather have for Mother's Day than a portrait of you. For the professional portrait photographer, and also for amateurs who do their own darkroom printing, the DuPont Company manufactures negative film, photographic chemicals, and Defender papers. Defender Valtura warm tone paper is an especially fine, friendlier paper for portraits. These are all among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, the cavalcade will come to you from the campus of Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Our stars will be Paul Lucas, Ann Rutherford, and Jackie Cooper. Our story, the exciting discovery of the new wonder drug, streptomycin, developed in the laboratory of Rutgers' distinguished scientist, Dr. Selman Waxman. Be sure to listen to this thrilling story of one of the most important contributions of science to mankind on next week's Cavalcade, starring Paul Lucas, Ann Rutherford, and Jackie Cooper. Tonight's original DuPont Cavalcade, The Man Who Took the Freedom Train, was written by Frank Gabrielson. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. Eddie Albert will soon be seen starring in the Allied Artist production... The Dude Goes West, a picture that was photographed on DuPont Superior 2 negative and recorded on DuPont Type 236 sound film. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Winner Takes Life, starring Paul Lucas, Ann Rutherford, and Jackie Cooper. Tonight, Cavalcade of America was presented from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York, and each week is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. NBC, the national broadcasting company.